Hello, I'm Chris. I'm Lee. I'm Gareth. I got started in shoes in 1991, um, visiting Nike Town in Oregon, um, where fortunately I picked up the jacket and the trainers to go with it. Um, these were bought by my father, um, not this actual pair, this is the retro pair, um, but yeah, this is what got me going. I think uh, the first pair, the first memorable pair that I got were a pair of Reebok Hexalites. Uh, Around the same time, I also went high end and got some Travel Fox, <laughs> which, when I was fourteen years old, seemed quite high end because they were about hundred and odd quid. But we knew the lad who worked in the stock room, so I got them for forty because they were nicked. Uh, yeah, that's probably mine. To be fair, mine. I've always had a couple of pairs since I was younger. I've had Ewing's, uh, Reebok pumps. All kinds of stuff like that. Uh, and then when I got to early teens, started playing basketball, so I started getting into Jordans. The first pair that I probably remember getting to play in were the, uh, the Taxi 12s. And that's it, really. I've just always had basketball shoes, and then I started getting more into uh, runners and stuff like that. Would I class myself as a collector? Possibly not. Just somebody that likes to feel good in a nice pair of shoes so that I can go out somebody will see me walking down the street and wearing something that's that little bit different than what your normal person would wear so for me I won't class myself as a collector but I'd class myself as a lover of shoes lover of trainers I don't collect at all uh, I, I buy shoes that I like that I want to wear uh, and if when they turn up I don't want to wear them I'll just sell them, uh, or give them free as I've done a couple of occasions. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I haven't got a room that's full of boxes, although this is absolutely incredible, and uh, I could live here. But uh, I can't have a pair of shoes that I'm not going to wear. I won't leave a pair DS in a box unless I've got pl plans for it. Uh, so yeah, I'm not a collector, I just like shoes. The same again, I wouldn't class myself as a collector, I just buy what I like and it just happens that once you've bought one pair then you see the next one and then it just sort of snowballs and before you know it you've got wardrobes full of trainers and nowhere to put them really. <laughs> That's it. Three of my favourite pairs of trainers, um, firstly one that I bought pretty recently, which is Dawn back in 95. Um, I absolutely love these. I wore them to uh, the barbecue, and that's the only time that they've actually been, oh, sorry, no, I wore them to the pizza shop as well one night. Um, I absolutely love these to death, and I've just bought their, uh, their brother, which are currently being uh, treated to a little makeover. Uh, but yeah, awesome trainer. Secondly, <coughs> Again, love these. This is my DS pair. I've got a beat pair which I really have beaten in about three or four months. Um, I wear them nearly every single day, but I had to buy a second pair because I just love these so much. Fantastic, fantastic trainer. <clears throat> Last but not least, um, people are probably going to call me a bit of a hype beast here, but um, I have all three of these. Hype beast. Thanks. Um, I've never really been into 90s um, up until I got the red pair and then I very very quickly bought the white pair and very very quickly bought the blue pair. Um, absolutely love them. Um, the red pair are looking a little bit worse for wear now because I wear them probably as often as the big apples to be honest. Um, walking the dog in an evening and such. Um, but yeah, they're my three favourite pairs. <coughs> I'm going to go from hype beast to absolutely not hype beast, and I wasn't going to do this order, but now I will for to, just to prove my point. Uh, Puma Boris Becker leathers. Uh, I saw them on drop date when they were going to release, 
I didn't see them release. I missed out completely. Uh, then a couple of months after that, they landed on SNS for 30 quid. And they're full kangaroo leather and they feel incredible. And they're some of the comfiest shoes I own, really. I love them. And really cool laces, which are probably worth 30 quid. So that's bad. Uh, secondly, is a purchase probably three, four months ago. Of one of the great lads on Crep City, and I love them. Absolutely love them. I've seen loads of people stick them on Instagram. Tom Spurs, I think, is the guy that made me literally go and look for them, search back a couple of months for Crep City. These were sat there, uh, I bought them straight away. Lovely pair, great pair. And bring it back to hype. I jumped on these. I avoided them on release because of the hype. I quietly regretted it the whole time. At the barbecue, Nick Sanchez was wearing them at the barbecue. Thought they looked great on foot. Uh, found them for a really good price. Off a really nice lad. Again on Crep City. Uh, picked them up recently. Still DS. I'll whack them on for Crep City probably. Right, my first pair are the Jordan Black Cement Freeze. Uh, I actually traded these with Jim Russell of Crep City for a pair of Papa Bear Dunks that were a bit beat and these were a bit beat too. So they, they needed a, a sole repaint, which was the first time I've actually done a sole repaint job and it come out quite well actually. Uh, but since then, they started getting a bit beat again because I wear them quite a lot. Uh, but these are like, these are must have, I think as well. Uh, Next one are these Air Max 90s, which are like probably my most travelled pair because I got these in LA last year. Uh, I got them from Sporty, went to Sporty LA and said, uh, like I want to really, I wanted a pair of Jordans really. And the guy went in the back and pulled these out and the, I think they're from the women's wicker pack, which I've not actually seen anybody else with them. So I think they're quite rare. Uh, and then next are these, which are probably one of the only shoes that I've paid way above retail for. I paid virtually like three times retail for these, but with the leather being such good quality and it just being one of my favourite silhouettes on the shoe, it was it was definitely worth the money. And I'm, I'm glad that, that I picked them up for what I did, really. And that's it. The shoes that I would most rock would have to be these. Um, not purely because I love them so much, because of the attention that they get when people see you walking down the street. And, um, kids look at them as though you're Captain America. Or the Pied um, Piper. Or the Pied Piper. Yeah. <laughs> um, but people who know what they are will stop you and ask you in the street exactly what they are. And that for me is what it's about. I'm still undecided which one I'd rock. Uh, I'll go for these because I love the colour. Uh, and I almost regretted missing out. But I'm very happy with these. Yeah, I'd rock these. Uh, same again, it's a hard one. I'm going to say I will rock these because they've got the most memories. I went to LA in them, Vegas in them. Uh, been to Niagara Falls wearing them. It was just a really good holiday, so these these bring back memories. So the shoes probably not actually worth that much, but just for the memories, it's it's worth keeping and rocking. The one that I give away would be this one, and it's because of the love that I have for it, and I would want somebody else to have that same love for this trainer. Um, not only for its comfort, just because. It is the one that I probably do care about the most in all that I've got. I like that one. I give my Kill Bills away. Uh, I absolutely love them. Probably like them more than the uh, RF Sagas. But they're underrated in my opinion. 
I don't think enough people have got them. I don't think enough people have tried to wear them or can get their head around the yellow. Uh, and I pass it on so someone else can enjoy them and see how great they are. Uh, the pair that I give away would be these. Not because I don't like them, it's just because they're probably one of the most valuable shoes that I own. And I know a lot of people can't afford them, so I think it'd be a really nice gesture to give it to somebody that would appreciate it and that couldn't afford it really, because it is a really nice I shoe. I looked at you both size nines, I've got your big apples and your... And yeah, I'll take both of them. I want to get yours. The ones that I burn <clears throat> would have to be these. Purely and simply, because could you imagine people's faces if you actually did it? That, would, for me, would just... Yeah. That'd I think it. we could get a light out and it could be arranged. I'd give you a hand with that. Should we do it? I've stopped smoking. I've got the electric. I'm burning these. I love them. Really comfy. Great quality. But they cost me 30 quid. Uh, so, fair enough. I don't want to burn these, but I've sort of backed myself into a corner. So, uh, <laughs> it's probably because they never cost me that much. And I think I could replace them quite easily, so I'd say I'd burn these. You'd have more time to put them out as well. I think they'd take longer to burn. Probably wouldn't. Those wicker ones would go right. <laughs> There was a fire. The one pair that I would save would be my OG pair of Bordeaux Sevens, for the simple reason that they were bought by my father um, a long, long time ago. So yeah, for me, the original of these. <clears throat> right. Well, it depends when the fire is really. If the fire is this week, then I'm not. I'm probably just going to run out, and I can replace most of what I've got. If the fire is next week or the week after, then... I don't think you get a choice when the fire is up. It's not sure. <laughs> anyway. Fire's now. <laughs> I'll save all these. Uh, okay, so I'm in the middle of a deal at the moment with a great lad from Leeds, and I have managed to secure the only pair I've seen in my size of the Kangaroo Overkill Blue Grapes and I'm very excited about finally getting them and there will be no fires anywhere near them or me for that matter. Even me though, first, then the shoe. Even though they come in a wood box? Even though they come in a wooden box, they're number two of ten <clears throat> and no fire. Because you're not playing number one. Because they're <laughs> my size. Right, the pair that I save, which I know is a bit daft because I just said I'd give them away, but... <laughs> <laughs> Is, uh, is, the, the sky. is these because I've only actually worn them once so I'd like to get a bit more wear out of them no sentimental value really but it's just more the value of the shoe than the sentimental value <laughs> I'd also like to pay the uh, the resale for them again so that's it really <clears throat> the pair that I'd live in for a year again would be my big apples just purely and simply on comfort um, the pair that I've beaten in four months which hopefully they will last me a year um, would certainly be the ones I'd even sleep in. I don't know if I can top that really. Uh, these are just really comfy and they're really versatile and the first picture I saw of them on foot was someone wearing shorts so that's good. Was it Boris Becker? No, he's, I don't think he's, don't think he's thinking those about them, to be honest. Uh, I've worn these of all sorts. The leather, again, is fantastic. They're a really comfy shoe. And they only cost me 30 quid, so I'll be in them in a year. Right, the pair that I uh, wear for a year are not necessarily this colourway, <laughs> but sagas just in general. Uh, because I've got a pair now and I literally wear them every day for work. And I just find them a really comfortable shoe for my foot. And actually saying that, it might might be these that I dropped for a year because I've not got these, but I'd like to pick them up because I think they're a really nice shoe. My last pair purchased um, are actually on the way from Australia, um, and it's the size New Balance um, BWB collaboration, one of forty pairs from two thousand and six. So. They're due to be with me within the next few days and may be seen at the next Crape City. 
My last purchase, well, currently I've got a purchase ongoing, which is the grapes. And before that, I put up a little list of wanting to buy some. And I ended up buying a pair of these, a pair of these, a pair of Lightspeed Ubic Cool Breeze, and oh, another pair of these, the orange ones. And that, yeah, I got those four in 24 hours. The last pair that I purchased was actually, it wasn't these, but the, these are the last ones that I got in hand, which I only got midweek, uh, these Star Cows. And I actually purchased these because I saw Mark Robinson's last video and I completely missed them when they dropped. And I think they're, they're a really clean shoe, nice for the autumn. And I think they're definitely gonna be one to look for in the future. Uh, classic but I actually picked up the Supreme Jordan 5s this morning which I wasn't planning on picking up so they're my latest pickup. If I could buy any pair whatsoever it would have to be a pair of these. No in fact no definitely not. For me and it is going to be a bit of a cliche but it would be a mag without a question all day long. Uh, as I mentioned I'm getting the blue grapes and they weren't even a grail because I didn't think I'd ever see them in my size in fantastic condition or in any condition I just didn't think they'd come up for me so they weren't a grail but I'm getting them so I'm very happy about that uh, and there's loads of just, there's loads of really nice runners that I want possibly the next big pair I'll look for is the Alfreds uh, quality is fantastic. These are yours. Don't just tell you about it. Uh, yeah, these would be definitely up there. Uh, the pair of grails I go for is I wouldn't necessarily wear these because I don't think SB lows are the most comfortable. But I'd go for the, the pigeon dunks, and that's mainly behind the story behind them and how hyped they were and the uh, when they released all the writing in New York. But I don't think I'd actually wear them, it'd be more a showpiece. But it's definitely a grail. My favourite brand has got to be Nike. Um, from an early age, it's what I wore constantly. Um, it's the one that I always look for on release days. Um, and still, the one that I look for on release days. So yeah, for me, it's got to be Nike all day long. I prefer my more traditional runners, so... I'm a basics person, uh, I just can't beat them at the moment really, there's too many that I want, too many that I like and not enough space. Mine's the same again, it's, I don't want to say it's Nike because I think the quality is not the best at the moment but it's, it's just they're always there and they always will be there at the top. For me, the pair that's essential to any collection as an Adidas superstar. Obviously these are the uh, Pony Hair Metal Toes um, which I bought at the last Crip City. Um, I love these and they look unbelievable on foot. Um, I have several other pairs of superstars um, but these have to be my favourite one. Uh, mine's not necessarily Kill Bills but it's definitely a pair of Sagas. Uh, all threes but I didn't bring any threes with me. So I'm going for Asics Gel Saga. My one pair that's essential to any collection is not necessarily a, a Dunk SB, but just a Dunk in general. Uh, I think just it's one of the shoes that started it all and the history behind the shoe and they're still going now and it's just a timeless sh uh, shoe. For me, an underrated pair, Ewing's. Um, I've had these from the 90s um, and then obviously the most recent years as well. Um, absolutely love these and comfort is unbelievable. Um, you can wear them in the rain, your feet ain't going to get wet. Um, you can rock them with jeans, trackies, whatever you want to. Very, very underrated shoe. Overrated has to be the Tiffany Dunk. I hate this shoe with a passion. Um, 
I bought a pair of these, um, paid way too much for them. Wore them for 10 minutes, walking my dog. Um, should have let them crap on them to be fair, uh, because they are that bad. I hate this shoe with a passion. Go chip on your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> underrated. For me, it's not this particular model, although it is very underrated. Uh, it's Saucony in general, really. I think the majority of Saucony, the shape is fantastic. They're extremely comfortable. Uh, and there's some really, really nice colourways and uh, models out there. So I think they're really underrated. Overrated. Overrated is Tiff's. I got a pair at the start of the year. I thought they looked incredible. My missus thought they looked incredible. I wore them to Crep City and by the time I got back to the hotel, my feet felt, smelt and bled incredible. It was terrible. The, the, the most uncomfortable shoe I've had. I sold them very, very far away. I think they're in the Philippines, thankfully. Uh, I think they look nice. It's really overrated because they're not comfortable whatsoever. My un <coughs> underrated pair are the New Balance 1500. I've only just actually started getting into New Balance and these just fit my feet perfectly and the quality on these shoes is unbelievable. Uh, especially the made in England ones from the Flimby factory. Uh, my overrated pair is I think no, you can put them down. <laughs> is I think majority the majority of Yeezys are down. overrated. Uh, just the materials used, and I I don't rate them as a shoe. I have owned pairs of Yeezys, but as soon as I bought them, they was coming one door and straight out the other. Chris, Chris. 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 all day. Me. How much you found a Chris? Me. I love them. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm not a hype beast whatsoever. I'm wearing a pair of these which cost me less than a GR does. Uh, these I got for 30 quid and I absolutely love them. Uh, I avoided these when they first came out because I wanted to avoid the hype. Uh, it's you. It's you. Yeah. If it's found a quid, you'll have it. I would say I'm, I'm not a hype beast, but I do get caught up in the hype when I have bought Yeezys just because I could buy them when I've not actually wanted them. And the same this morning, I actually bought the Supreme Jordan 5, so I guess that's kind of hype beast material. You are a hype beast. Yeah, you're just making my shoe. <laughs> I'm just a bigger hype beast. Yeah, you're the bigger hype beast. <laughs> Crap City means to me, um, it's a tough question. It's just somewhere that I can be me, where I can give people advice, I can get advice. Um, it means a lot to me. It's probably one of the first things that I look at in the morning and one of the last things that I look at at night, which sounds pretty sad. Um, in fact, it's better than looking at my missus. But yeah, um, it means a lot to me. She's not bad to be fair. I've been on your profile. She's not on my profile. With someone else. <laughs> I look at a lot of people's misses. Anyway, anyway, where were we? Uh, Crep City, what it means to me, I don't know, it means everything and, and, and nothing at the same time, really. Uh, I mean, it is just only shoes. But it. without Crep City, I wouldn't like shoes as much. Because I wouldn't know as much. I wouldn't see so much variety. I wouldn't know how just... You know, just as you can bring people together uh, from all over the place. Uh, One other thing. We wouldn't know Steve McCann. We wouldn't have met Steve. Yeah, the privilege. Wouldn't yeah. have watched him drinking his red wine, dancing on the table, <laughs> getting some random bird to wear his tiffs, buying him tea, sending him home in a cab, uh, and literally seeing him scare the life out of everybody going to the next Crep City event. So yeah, that's what it means to me, Steve McCann. Uh, Crep City actually means quite a lot to me. It's, it's the first sneaker forum that I got involved with on Facebook. It taught the amount of stuff that people taught me about shoes that I didn't know before is untrue. Uh, and I've met a lot of good friends that I think 
hopefully going to be friends for life. It's like these two, never knew these two two years ago. Look at us now. Who are you? <laughs> You've just drove me here before. <laughs> <laughs> he's, the, he's the one with the tiffs. Must he's be Steve McCann's first. Oh, he couldn't take them all. Oh, where'd they gone? Oh, they've disappeared. Burns <laughs> Sportif, you can feel the emblem on the side. Uh, I don't know if it's I'm not too good on these, so I don't know if it's an, a clat or a zenith. I'll say the Lecoq Sportif laced banana bender. It's not a work shoe or something, is it? It's not a trainer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Yeah, some kind of <laughs> shoe, office shoe, leather shoe. Gel like free, free because it's got a funny tongue. <laughs> I think these are. I think by the feeling, because I was playing with these before. It's the Colette uh, Dotty 25th anniversary ones. Definitely not a Puma suede. Is it those high ratchy things? It's not mine, is it? No, no best I can do. One of those high ratches. Yes, I am counting. <sighs> I did ask either the OG or this. Mm. OG? <laughs> it's 
literally could be anything. <laughs> I'm going to use Winston's education and say it's a puma suede. Basics GL3. Is it one that I looked at earlier on? I've been here for hours. <laughs> no. I've looked at every single pair twice. Did I specifically pick these up? We've also done that. Is it that? It's got the red bit on the back. Don't know what they're called. Don't know what they're called at all. Um, but it's the ones that I picked up earlier on. Play final answer. Yeah, it's the ones I picked up earlier on. It's a GL3, but I don't know what they're called. Is it spoke about Reebok Hexalite? Is it late? I'm going to go with the other one that I can think of that something similar is some kind of kamikaze. Reebok, don't know. That's the best I can give you. Nike. I think it's a 97. Yeah, I think it's a 97. Some kind of tear pack because it's not got the ripples, uh, the stitching on the side. Uh, 
Max 97. Some kind of hyperfuse of some description, not sure.